let's talk about methods and constructors a little bit. For the sake of explanation, I have created another class and that has the code exactly what we need. I have two variables and an object of class maths and using that object we will be able to execute this method addition which is residing in the maths class. This essentially means we are triggering the behavior of that object. Now in here we are sending two parameters to this method. This is not mandatory. You can also get rid of this. You can also get rid of it. Let's save the file. By the way, I guess we have errors here because these two parameters are no longer available. Instead, what I'm going to do, instead of finding the addition of A and B, I'm going to find the addition of X and Y. I'm going to save the file. Now oh, this is going to bring an error here because in this method we're not receiving anything. So we should not send anything. We'll get rid of this. I'll save the file and let's try to run the program. What is the result expected? While creating the object, we're also calling the constructor in here and we're setting these values just as I explained in my previous video. So the result that I'm expecting is 50. Let's try to run this program. By the way, I guess we have an error here. Let's get rid of this. I don't know what it is. Okay, we have we've changed the method here so it would impact here as well. Now take a note of this. Changing anything in here will actually impact everywhere else. Now we're going to talk about that problem and its solution pretty soon when we talk about access specifiers. But for now, let's make the change. Now we run this program. Run file. This will give us 50. Well, hopefully. No, it will. 50. Great. Let's expand this. So we can also have methods without arguments at all. Methods can also have the written type. What do I mean by that? I don't want to print this here. Instead, what I want to do, I would like to return the result. And when we return something from this method, we're also going to say what we're returning, which type of data we're sending back to the calling method. In this case, it's integer. So I'm going to say int. And if we're sending something, we also receive it over here. So we're going to have another variable, maybe int c. Actually, we're going to get rid of this a and b because we're not using them. So I'm going to say int a equals 0. And I'm going to assign a value to that a. What's that value would be? Whatever I'm returning from this method. So we're calling this method object.addition here. And whatever is being returned from here, we're going to receive it. And I'd like to print it. Stem dot out dot print ln. Let's print it. Let's run the program and you would get the same result. There you go. Now let's take a look at the syntax of methods and constructors. A method will have the following syntax. It will have an access modifier which we'll talk about at later point of time. So ignore for now. We're going to have a written type which I have just looked at. A written type can be of any type. It could be it could be a primitive data type or a user defined data type. We'll talk about user defined data type pretty soon. We're going to give a name to that method and we can have no or any number of parameters. And within this block, we'll have some code with optional written statement. If the written type is of void, then probably we don't need to return anything. If this is of type int, then probably we should return the integer from this method. Now, coming to constructors. The syntax of a constructor is no different from method except for a constructor 
there won't be any return type at all. It will have access modifier, it will have a name and the name supposed to be and should be exactly the same name as to that of the class in which it is residing including the case. There won't be any written statement because we won't have any written type here. So essentially this is the syntax of a constructor. Okay now let's go back to code and talk about one important thing. You can think of math as a user defined data type just as int. Int is a primitive data type. Maths is a user defined data type. Now when we have this statement defined we can literally use this object just as any other data type like int. So that also means we can also return an object from this method. This could be of any data type including user defined data type. The maths in here is just a user defined data type and you can use the same way you use a primitive data type like int. Alright, this might sound a little confusing. I'm going to clarify it in next 2-3 videos. See you in my next video.